Hello and welcome to another James Makes. I'm at a different site today in quite cold conditions, as you can probably guess by the hat gloves and the snow around me. It feels very Ice Age-like, which is quite appropriate really, because I'm at a very special Ice Age site, really, really well known in British archeology span and important for a wider European sphere for Paleolithic archeology. span this site, Creswell Crags, is known for the Creswellian, which runs from about 13,000 to 11,800 BP. It was named by the archaeology professor Dorothy Garrod in the 1920s. There's a particular stone tool, the Creswellian point, and it's that that I'm going to be showing you how one might have been made in prehistory, a site like this, although they have been found elsewhere. So, to start with, I'm going to need a few pieces of protection. I've already got my gloves on. A good leg leather is always recommended and some goggles as well. Not very Ice Age or even prehistoric, I appreciate, but uh, I would certainly like to keep my full eyesight. Now, if you're local to this area or know your geology, flint doesn't occur around here naturally. So for any flint tools, the raw material would have had to have been brought in either from the south or from a nearby coastline. So a large piece of flint like this piece as a raw nodule would be a really valuable luxury good. You could certainly get many, many stone tools out of this and the preferred style of working flint at this time was laminar blade production. It's where you'd start with a, a sort of cone-shaped piece of flint like this and take long shards of flint that you'd then retouch into other tools and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So with that Creswellian point made, which is just a blade that's been truncated to remove the platform with the end that's, uh, and back of it that's been trimmed to back it, I'll then need to actually fix it to a dart of some kind. And conveniently, Blue Peter style for UK watchers, I have an example right here which uh, covered in snow and hail you can see how it would be fitted in place and glued with silver birch, tar and bound with sinew or some kind of plant fiber onto a nice flexible shaft so that when it's thrown from a spear thrower it flexes and bends through the air. A, a lethal, lethal instrument but particularly in the Creswellian hunting reindeer Perhaps not in conditions quite like this though, I would have thought the hunters would probably stay in their caves trying to keep warm as we probably should be right now because what I can tell you is it's freezing here at the moment. So as you can see with these wintry, wintry conditions we have here, with that bit of napping you saw my fingertips were really starting to go. But that's interesting because I particularly experience flint napping can be extra, extra hard when it's really cold, partly because of the shocking of fingers, but glassy material like flint tends to get really, really fragile and brittle. Although it's pretty brittle as glass in the first place, you don't want it too brittle because otherwise the flakes just shatter and break as soon as you try to detach them. So something to consider about tool making in the Ice Age, of the difficulties of just the cold itself as well as just living in it. So that's a Creswellian point. Won't be going off hunting reindeer. I'll be going somewhere to keep warm, I can tell you. Oh, I think warm parts. So now that it's uh, getting very, very cold, I'm going to start that again. Oh, I'm getting cramped as well. I hope people watching can understand that it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> 